This is the seventh section and final section of chapter three, Equations and Inequalities, and this section is about regions. So let's just do a quick reminder of uh, region. So a region is an area that is bounded or outlined, or the, e the edge is given by one or more inequalities. You may just have a single inequality giving the, like the boundary, the end part of an inequality, or you may have many. And the boundary area can be a solid line, and it'll be a solid line if our inequality in includes a less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to symbol in it, meaning that the boundary is part of the region. Or the boundary can be a dotted line, that's if we have a less than or greater than symbol in our inequality, meaning the boundary is not part of the region. So I've just got an example here of a quadratic and the yellow shaded area and the green sh shaded area represent uh, two uh, regions. The yellow uh, shaded area would, if this is the graph of y equals f of x, I'll just put that here. So I've got the graph of y equals f of x. Then above the curve, this yellow bit, is the region y greater than f of x. So you could think of greater than as meaning above. The actual line itself is where y equals f of x and the line below um, or the region below would be y less than f of x. Now you could think of f of x or the less than as meaning below, so greater than above less than below. Now, strictly speaking, I've drawn a, um, a solid line here. So that would be greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to, if the boundary would was a solid line. If I'd drawn a dotted line, then it would be just y greater than f of x. So that would have a dotted boundary. And same here, if this was y less than f of x, that would also be a dotted boundary. But just think greater than is above, or greater than or equal to is above. Equal to is the actual curve itself. Less than or less than or equal to is below. Example 13. On graph paper, I've got some graph paper here, shade the region that satisfies the inequalities. We've got y greater than or equal to negative 2, x less than 5, y less than or equal to 3x plus 2, and x greater than 0. Now, when we've got lots of inequalities, sometimes it's more useful to shade the area that you don't want, and then that leaves a gap in the middle, and that will be the bit that you do want. The trouble with actually shading the areas that you do want, you can end up with a real mess in the middle. But we'll draw each one and uh, we'll go through uh, and see what it looks like. So first of all, let's start by drawing a grid. OK, so let's start with the first um, inequality here, which is y is greater than or equal to negative 2. So we always start by drawing the equality. So we're going to start by drawing the line y is equal to 2 or negative 2. And this is going to be a solid line. And that's because I've got the greater than or equal to symbol. So the line uh, y equals negative 2 is going to be down here somewhere. And we're going to draw that as a solid line. So there we go. Now, whenever you draw any uh, line, always label it. So y is equal to negative 2. Now because it says greater than or equal to negative 2, that's going to be the region, the area above it. So I'm not going to shade the area above it. I'm basically going to shade the area below it, the bit that I don't want. So I know that I'm going to ignore this part here below. You'll see how this will all fit together at the end. So I'm actually shading or just put in a little bit of shading on the area that I don't want 
so that when it's all finished I'll end up with a nice little gap in the middle right let's move on to the next one and this one is x is less than 5 x is less than 5 so this is going to be a dotted line and we need to draw the boundary which is going to be x equal to 5 and this will be dotted line and that's because it's less than 5 not less than or equal to so that's going to be a line here this is the line x equals 5 and I'm going to draw a dotted line here so there's my line and inequality says x is less than 5 now that's going to be the area on this side the area to the left of the line so I'm going to shade the bit that I don't want and I'm just going to put um, should we do that in green keep it the same yep so this is the bit that I don't want over here so I'm going to shade that off like this so that's the area that I don't want so so far it's going to be somewhere in here based on the two that I've done okay next one I've got here y is less than or equal to 3x plus 2 so I will start by drawing the line y is equal to 3x plus 2 and this will be a solid line because it is less than or equal to okay what I've done is I've just worked out some coordinates I could use a table function or just work some out quickly in my head and then I'm going to join these points up so there's my line now we may want to think right because this is less than or equal to it's below the line but we're just going to check whether that's right or not and we're going to use a checkpoint so basically what I'm going to do I'm going to pick a coordinate a nice easy one on that's either on one side of the line or the other and see whether it satisfies this inequality or not and it'll tell me which side I need to shade so I'm going to pick the checkpoint 0 0 so that's the origin here which is below the line now if I put 0 0 into this I'll get 0 is less than or equal to 3 times 0 plus 2 in other words 0 is less than or equal to 2 now is that statement true it is true and because it's true it means that this point 0 0 is in the region so this is the side that I want now remember what I'm doing I'm sort of shading the side that I don't want so I'll color code this as well so I'm shading off the area which I don't want because that 0 0 was in the area that I wanted and I'm going to shade off the area that I don't want and you can see the advantage of doing it this way that I'm sort of left with this part in the middle here rather than lots of untidy shading now if I had picked a different test point let's say 0 10 and I put it into this and I put 0 10 into this I would have had 10 is less than or equal to um, 3 times 0 plus 2 10 is less than or equal to 2 which is false that's a false statement if I'd pick this false means it's not in the region so this point or any point over here is not in the region that I want and because I'm shading the region that I don't want I would shade off this side here I move on to the last one the last one here is x is greater than 0 so we'll start by drawing a dotted line for x equals 0 so it's going to be x equals 0 which is basically the y-axis and it's going to be a dotted line so I've got my dotted line in here and I should label the uh, lines I didn't do the last one so that was y is equal to 3x plus 2 and this is x equal to 0 with my dotted line now since we want the area where x is greater than 0 that's the region the area which is to the right of the dotted line that's the area that I do want over here but remember I'm shading off the area that I don't want so which color can we go for let's go for blue so we're shading off the area that we don't want like this 
so that the area that I do want is this bit here. Now the, the question did say to shade the region that satisfies that. So let's shade that in a different color and then we'll label it as R or something like that. So let's do it in this dark blue. So it's this area here, which is the bit that I do want. And just make it so that I can make it clear to the examiner or the person checking my question that this is the part that I want here. Normally when we get these types of questions, we would label that region R. So I'm just going to put an R there and just do like a big arrow pointing to it. That, that is my region. So there's no confusion about which is the part that I do want. And I guess what I could do now is rub out those outside regions like that. So I'm just left with the, the bit that was clear on the inside, but that would be my final solution. Example 14, on graph paper, shade the region that satisfies the inequalities. 2y plus x is less than 14, and y is greater than or equal to x squared minus 3x minus 4. So let's start with a grid. Okay, there's my grid. Let's start with this 2y plus x equal to 14, and this is going to be a dotted line because the original inequality um, has less than, not less than or equal to. So I want at least two points to be able to plot this. So I think in the easiest way to do it is if we make x equal to zero, that will give a value of y of seven because two times seven plus zero is 14. And if I do a value of y as zero, that would mean that x is 14. Now having a look at my grid, that's not going to be useful having that value, so we'll try a different one. So two whole numbers ideally. So let's see, what if I made x equal to 4? Would that work? Yeah, I could have x equal to 4. And if x equals 4, that means that y has to equal 5 because 2 times 5 plus 4 is 14 so that will work so let me plot those two points so 0 7 which is going to be here and then 4 5 and 4 5 is going to be here and I'll draw my dotted line through those points okay so here's my line because it's less than 14 I'm inclined to think that it's below the line is the bit that I want on the area below because it's less than, but I'm just going to double check. So I'm going to use a test point. So I'll pick a coordinate, which is definitely on one side of the line or the other. I'll pick zero, zero, because that's nice and easy. So that means X equals zero, Y equals zero. Let's put that into the inequality and see what happens. So if I do two Y, two times zero, plus X zero, is that less than 14? So basically got zero is less than 14. Is that true? Yes, it is true. So that means that the side which has got zero, zero is the area that I want. So I do want this side. So because on this question, there are only two inequalities, it would be easy enough to shade the area that I, I do want. So I can, I know I want below the line okay so rather than shade it what i'll write down is i'll put here that i want the area below the line and i'll just keep that there so that when i know which area i want from the quadratic then i can then work out which area i'm going to shade so i'm not going to shade it just yet i'll just put this here to remind myself i want the area below the line okay so now let's do the quadratic so we want to draw the line y is equal to x squared minus 3x minus 4 and this is going to be a solid line because it's greater than or equal to so let's see if this factorizes and if it does then 
that's going to help me sketch it i probably just want the roots of it so let's have a look uh four and one i think that's going to work four and one and i want minus four plus one so i've got roots at um, x equals negative one and x equals four so let's plot those points x equals negative one and x equals four now i use my calculator to solve this and what's useful is that the calculator also tells me where the minimum point of this quadratic is and it'd be useful to know where the minimum is to help me sketch this and it says the minimum point is where x is three over two or one and a half and y is negative 13 over uh oh sorry 25 negative 25 over 4 which is negative 6.25 so i can plot negative 6.25 so something like this so there's the minimum point and then i get a better idea of this u shape so let's sketch that in that solid line so there we go there's our quadratic i'll just extend this a bit now remember we said we want to shade below the uh, straight line the line 2x uh, sorry 2y plus x is 14 and let's see whether we need to shade above or below this line which is y is equal to x squared minus 3x minus 4 so this is greater than or equal to now with a quadratic greater than or equal to is always above less than or equal to is always below so i want above so i want above the curve and i want below the line so that's going to be this area here above the curve below the line so let's just shade that area off so that's going to be this bit here above the curve below the line like this so it's a enclosed finite area sometimes you get these regions which are infinite because they just carry on forever in one particular direction so you should now be able to do exercise 3g on page 55 and then continue with the mixed exercise.